You see a lot of game maker tutorials going over things such as what are variables, but it's kind of rare that you see a video covering what's the stuff that you put into those variables actually are. So because I'm never one to pass up an opportunity to make something more complicated than it has to be, let's talk about data types. So way back in the day, there were only a couple different variable types in Game Maker. Uh, there were kind of like two and a half variable types in Game Maker uh, in the uh, in the days of like Game Maker Seven, Game Maker Eight. Over time, more have been added. Although Game Maker itself remains a dynamically typed language, so you don't have to define a data type or anything like that when you uh, when you create a variable. Uh, you could say variable string equals a string, and a string is just text. I actually remembered my real name this time. Strings need a little explanation. There are a series of letters and uh, other punctuation marks. Anything that you can, uh, anything that you can store in text, letters, numbers, spaces, uh, different symbols on the keyboard. Game Maker strings are stored in Unicode, which means that you can also use the extended character sets like the acute accented E, as you might find in a word such as Pokemon or um, any any of the other. That looks really weird when it's just hanging off the end of the end of my name there any other character in the extended Unicode character set. So this is pretty much any symbol from any language, plus a bunch of other things such as uh, control characters and emoji and that kind of thing. There's a whole host of functions you can use with strings. These haven't really changed over the course of Game Maker. Uh, if you type string followed by an underscore followed by the um, control space on the keyboard, you can see most of, the, uh, most of the functions that you can use with strings. You can use these to manipulate them. Uh, string digits will cut out all of the uh, all of the characters in a string that aren't the number zero through nine. Uh, string letters is a, is a similar function, which, uh, where is it, string letters? String letters is, is a similar function, which will cut out all characters in a string that aren't the letters A through Z, capital and lowercase. I don't want this video to just turn into an encyclopedia entry of all of the functions that you can use to handle strings. Uh, so I will instead say that if you want to know that, um, just hit F1 over the function name and you will open up a page of the manual uh, where you can find out more information. Strings are pretty straightforward. You also have real numbers. Uh, real numbers. Real numbers are basically what you know for math class. They're just numbers. Uh, an example of a real number would be, for example, five. That's a pretty nice number. I happen to like the number five. Uh, real numbers also allow you to store fractional parts. So you could type 5.25, for example, and that is a valid real number. Numbers in Game Maker by default are stored as 64-bit floating point, so that's double precision floating point. You can read all about those in Wikipedia. This allows you to store both fractions, uh, very, very small fractions like 0.001, uh, as well as large numbers, very large numbers. I believe the upper limit to what you can store in a 64-bit floating point value is somewhere around 10 to the 307 power. So that's a 1 followed by 307 zeros is the largest number that you can store in a... Um, in a real number in Game Maker. So if you've ever wanted to make some sort of like cookie clicker idle game in Game Maker, you're set. This does of course come with a bit of a trade-off as far as precision goes. So if you wanted to show message variable underscore number. So if you wanted to show a little message box with this uh, with this value in it, you can see it's going to give it to you uh, 5.25. It, uh, it didn't lose any values anywhere. Um, Game Maker actually, when it shows a number as a string, by default rounds it to two decimal places. So if you were to, um, if you were to show, if you were to instead try to display 5.125 on the screen, um, you would see 5.13, and that is not because you are losing precision. That's just because when Game Maker converts a number to a string, it will round it. If you want to not have it do that, you can say string format uh, variable number uh, two total integer places, and let's give it 20 decimal places which should be more than enough. So this is now going to print out 5.125 followed by 17 zeros. So there are some limitations to this, and these limitations aren't so much to do with Game Maker as they are to do with the fact that computers are finite machines which cannot store infinite precision. Um, 5 divided by 3, for example, is something that you may know in base 10 does not have a perfect decimal representation. Uh, if you try to write this out as a decimal, you would get 1.6666666 off to infinity and the, um, you would never have an end to that number. You would never be able to exactly represent that number in base 10. And the same is true for computers. So if I were to, um, let's, just, let's just show the first two decimal places of this number. And this is 
And that's a that's a reasonable rounding approximation of five divided divided by three, uh, one point six seven. If you round to the nearest even number, that's pretty reasonable. Uh, however, if you were to instead try to represent that value off to twenty decimal places, you are going to see something a little bit different happening, and that is that we are going to get one point six six. We're going to get about fourteen. I want to say that is. I'm not going to count uh, digits of precision. And then after that, it turns to one point six 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 on and on seven four zero six eight which is not, in fact, an accurate representation of, um, of 5 divided by 3 in base 10. Uh, this has to do with the fact that in computers, you're counting in base 2, you're doing fractions in base 2, place values are in base 2, and the way that you had um, the closest approximation to a number is going to be slightly different than it is in base 10. Just as you can't represent 5 divided by 3 perfectly in base 10, you also can't represent it perfectly in base 2. And since we only have 64 bits of precision to work with here in our real number data type, our 64-bit floating point number data type, we're going to be rounding a little bit. And this number that you see in the message box turns out to be the closest approximation that you can get to 5 thirds in, um, in a 64-bit double precision, double precision floating point number. Okay, most of the time that's not something to worry about. This degree of precision should be more than enough to do pretty much anything that you could ever want to do in a video game. Uh, with this kind of precision, you could like throw a robot at Pluto and have it land exactly where you want it to. But if you ever print out a very, very long number and start to notice it uh, lose precision after uh, about 14 decimal places, after about 14 significant digits, uh, that's why. Likewise, this works on the other side of the spectrum as well. It's not just fractional places. Um, if you try to have a number that was really, really, really big, uh, that should be enough zeros. And if you try to print this out, uh, you would also notice that we do not actually have the number that I typed in here. We have instead about 14 nines followed by 8322784. And again, that's um, 14 significant digits is nothing to sneeze at. If you were in fact making an idle game or something, this would really be fine. Because once you have a value that's about 20 dig digits long or whatever this number is here, adding one at a time uh, won't really be won't really be enough to change the value in any significant sense of the word. Now I want to make a video that's just all about floating point. Anyway, moving on, we've got some other data types to talk about. Uh, so there are also integers, and integers are numbers without the fractional part. Integers, for the most part, are pretty hidden from from view in GameMaker unless you really really want to use them. There are two types of integers: 32-bit integers and 64-bit integers. Uh, let's create ourselves something new. Let's call it variable integer, and we can assign this a value. This a number that you uh, that you type in to GameMaker will automatically be a a real number, a floating point number, a, a 64-bit double precision floating point number. In some programming languages, this would be interpreted as an integer unless you uh, unless you appended a point zero to the end, or um, F standing for floating point, or D standing for double precision floating point. Uh, GameMaker will not do that. GameMaker will try to make everything a, uh, a real number, decimal floating point number by default. In GameMaker, if you wanted a 64-bit integer, uh, there is a special function called int64, which you, can, um, which you can use. And you can type in anything to this function, and it will turn it into a 64-bit integer. I say anything, almost anything. It has to be a number, obviously. And um, as we're going to see later, uh, integers have their own precision limits before bad, before bad things start to happen. I did not actually show this uh, this value on the screen. So this is going to look on the surface the same as um the same as the same as any other number that you type. Uh, Five hundred is is a number. I don't know exactly what I can say about that. If you try to uh, insert a fraction into the integer sixty four function. It will be turned into an integer. The fractional part will be dropped. Integers are numbers that do not have a fractional part, also known as whole numbers. Uh, you can see the 0.5 fractional part got dropped, and we um, we just, we still have 500. Does that round um, to the nearest even number? If you have an exact 0.5, if I were to say 500.75, would that go to 500 or 501? I see it is going to be rounded to the nearest even number if you're on an exact 0.5, so... That is a banker's rounding or statistical rounding are a couple ways of, a couple names for that. So integers are stored inside the computer in a slightly different way than real numbers, uh, than floating point numbers. I'm not going to bore you with the details if you don't really care about that kind of thing, but we do still have some limits on the uh, the size of the number that we can store in an, in a 64-bit integer. 
The upper limit to what you can store in one of these is something in the realm of 8 quintillion, which is an 8 followed by 18 zeros. Hey. And the uh, lower bound is basically the negative of that. Uh, something in the realm of negative 8 quintillion or negative 8 followed by 18 zeros. I'll have the exact numbers on the screen right now because I have not memorized them. Uh, just in case you just in case you want to see what they look like. In addition to the int64 constructor over here, there are a couple other um, functions and mathematical operations in GameMaker which will return a 64-bit integer instead of the usual uh, instead of the usual floating point number. If you've ever used one of the bitwise operators, so that's a single pipe symbol, a single and symbol, uh, the tilde symbol, and a single caret symbol. Uh, these are the bitwise operators. If you've ever used these for anything in GameMaker, these will all return a 64-bit integer, even if the numbers that you started with were real numbers, were doubles. So stuff starts to get weird if you, uh, if you have two numbers and you try to do math on them, and those two numbers are of a different data type. Uh, you are perfectly free to add an int64 and a floating point number and a real number. Um, in almost all cases, that is going to result in the number being turned into a floating point number, uh, as you will see saying this uh, variable integer, which is this int64 up here, plus 0 0.5, has indeed turned into a floating point number, so we have 500.5. Um, if you were to multiply this, this should, give, this should give us 250, although that doesn't have a fractional part to begin with. Let's make this like a, let's make this like 0.3 instead. So this should give us uh, 165, cool. Okay, that doesn't have a fractional part either. This should be one, 166.5. Alright, this didn't this did indeed give us a fractional part because math. And you can divide as well. So this is almost going to multiply 500 by 3. And you can see it gives us 500 uh, 1501.50 because this isn't an exact third. So you can see that if you have an int64 and you try to do math on it with a floating point number, it is generally going to turn into a um a, a real number once again, and you will lose the int64. In the past, uh, in the past in GameMaker, there have been bugs where these don't return the data type they're supposed to. Um, I don't know if those are still bugs in GameMaker. If there are any particular bits of weirdness uh, when it comes to doing math on int64s, I will let you know. Um, I do know for a fact that if you had a um, if you had a value that was an int64 and you use the bitwise or equals on it, um, it would instead turn into an int32. And it is not supposed to do that. I hope soon uh, Yo-Yo Games fixes that bug because it's actually kind of annoying. Hey. Um, it doesn't really prevent you from doing anything, but it does mean you have to uh, go the long way around typing out that expression. But I digress. 32-bit uh, integers are also something that's in GameMaker. I am going to spend a limited amount of time talking about them. Uh, there is not an int32 constructor the way there is for int64s in GameMaker, but as you can see, there is a function called isInt32, and this will inform you if a number is, in fact, in a 32-bit integer. The only real difference between 32-bit integers and 64-bit integers is um, how big the number can be. The upper limit for a 32-bit integer is instead of about 8 quintillion, it's only about, I say only, it's only about 2 billion, and the lower limit is about negative 2 billion. Hey. The number that it can store is not half of the maximum value of an int64, but it is half the length of the maximum value of an int64, also known as the square root, as a bit of a fun fact. I personally actually am not a fan of the 32-bit integer because sometimes they pop up when you think you're dealing with either a floating point number like this, or when you think you're dealing with a 64-bit a number like this, and they can sneak problems into your code if you think you're dealing with one data type and you're actually not. Um, on the note of the isInt32 function, uh, there are functions such as that are similar to this for every data type in GameMaker. You have isReal, uh, which is uh, detecting if something is a real number, is a uh, floating point number. You have isInt64, which is for obviously int64s. Uh, isNumber, I believe, is part of GameMaker. Nope, is is numeric. All right, that's it. Is numeric is a function that's part of GameMaker, and this will return true if the value that you pass is any numerical numerical data type. So that's a real number, such as this, uh, a 64-bit integer or a 32-bit integer. I'll talk about the rest of these as um, as we go. All right, the next data type is the boolean, and believe it or not, I hate the boolean. So true and false. 
I'm just going to variable boolean equals true. I'm going to deal with false in a minute. I don't have to. False is basically the same as true. I can't believe I just said that. So booleans are true and false. You use these in logical operations. You would use a, a boolean expression for things such as checking if the player's HP is less than or equal to zero to see if they should die. You can check to see if the player's score is greater than or equal to a certain value uh, to see if they should get like an S rank instead of an A rank or B rank or whatever. Booleans show up all over the place. Now, there are a couple different kinds of booleans in Game Maker, and this, believe it or not, is probably the outright most ridiculous thing about Game Maker ever. And, um... That is the fact that there is a function called, let's just say, is boolean. Okay, is bool is uh, what it's also occasionally occasionally called. And you could pass a true-false value to the is bool function. And you could show that on the screen. And this is going to be zero. As you probably know, one is generally true and zero is generally false. Um, if you were to... Go away. If you were to uh, print out the value of true and print out the value of false, you would see that indeed in Game Maker, true is one and uh, false is zero. And the variable that contains the value true is not a Boolean. Let that sink in for a minute. So if you're wondering what type this is, uh, this is actually just a real number. Um, true and false. And Game Maker are literally one and zero. Uh, they're literally just macros for one and zero. This is a holdover from like the beginning of Game Maker. Um, if you were to say is, I believe, uh, real. No, nope, don't control shift S. If you were to say instead is real on val variable boolean, I believe this would be true. Um, one and zero are uh, real numbers, and you can see that true and false are actually real numbers instead of uh, instead of booleans. And that sounds oh. <clears throat> I was looking at the wrong one. Uh, regardless, this is a true and false are, are real numbers. So as ridiculous as this sounds, um, in your day-to-day -day operations, this isn't really going to change much for you because you're probably not really ever going to come up with a situation where treating true as one and false as zero is actually a problem. But it is honestly uh, pretty stupid, I think, in my, in my semi-professional opinion about things that are stupid. So this does beg the question of um, exactly what the isBool function will return true and false for. And the answer to that is that things like comparisons, uh, if you were to say something like, is 5 greater than 4? And if you were to show the value of this instead of a literal true or false, uh, this would return true. And you would see that this, the result of this uh, ca evaluation, calculation, variable, whatever, is in fact a Boolean. But the actual value of true or false is not. Okay. So if you were to convert this to a string, if you were to convert, if you were to convert a, um, if you were to convert a Boolean value to a string and try to display it in a message box, uh, this would just turn into zero or one, depending. Uh, you saw the result of that was one. If I were to reverse the, um, if I were to reverse the comparison and say is five less than four, we would have zero. If you were to try and do math on it for some reason, uh, you would see that uh, when they're converted to numbers, again, uh, true and false values are just uh, turned into zero and one. Uh, zero plus five is five. If I were to uh, instead make that true so that it turns into one, one plus five is six. Um, again, this. So as dramatic as I was being about this earlier, this isn't really honestly that bad. This isn't actually something that's likely to affect your day-to-day -day operations. Um, I don't think there's ever been anyone ever who's had problems making their game because of the difference between true and false and actual booleans in Game Maker. But it is, in fact, a, a very weird aspect of it. And if you're one of those people who's just looking for ammunition as to why Game Maker is a stupid game engine or whatever, um, that's a pretty big contender. Okay. The matter of what evaluates true and false, since both Boolean values and actual numbers and, as it turns out, many other things in Game Maker evaluate true false, is um, the subject of what I'm probably going to make next week's video of. So if you're interested in some of the weird things you can do with truth values, uh, stick around. There will be more of that coming soon. Let's move on. Actually, just, just for the sake of like documenting my, my trip down the road to insanity, I'm going to leave that there. More data types. Structs. 
Structs are a, um, a new data type that have been added fairly recently in Game Maker Studio 2.3, starting, um, I guess, last August. Technically earlier than that, if you were involved in the beta. And structs are uh, what one might call lightweight objects. They can contain uh, their own variables. You might define them with a JavaScript object notation. Uh, a can be a number. Um, name can be uh, a string. You can have a, you can have a, a third variable for uh, for the sake of storing a true false value if you want. You can access the things in the struct with a dot operator. I've made a whole series of videos in the past when the uh, the 2.3 beta first came out on what you can do with structs, and I will have links to those if you want to see more. But uh, if you want a very short example of something that you can do with these, let's show message. Let's say variable struct dot name, and this is going to show us Fred because Fred is the name of the struct. Um, you can use any variable names you want. Almost. There's a couple of restricted ones. Uh, some of the built-in uh, variable names in GameMaker cannot be variables that structs use. I believe argument, argument uh, will cause issues if you try to um, if you try to create a variable with that name. Oh no, it's allowed. Cool. There's a couple that are uh, restricted. If you were to just uh, instead of showing the value of the struct itself, um, if you were to just show the struct you would see a string representation of it in somewhat something resembling JavaScript object notation. Um, this isn't exactly JSON, but it's pretty close and it'll tell us what is in the struct. Those are structs. Structs are fun. Arrays. Did not used to be a data type. Uh, these became a data type in GameMaker Studio 1. Previous versions of GameMaker before GameMaker Studio 1 had arrays, but they were weird and they kind of sucked and you couldn't do some of the things you might have expected to be able to do with them. Uh, to make a long story short, all variables in GameMaker Studio 1 in their own way were arrays. But those days are long gone, thank god, and I'm not going to talk about them anymore. Um, arrays allow you to store a series of values in sequence. So these can be numbers uh, 10, 50, 25. Uh, these can be strings. You can mix, mix and match numbers and strings. Uh, you don't have to have an array of either one or the other. Um, a quick brown, fox, and I'm not going to type out the entire sentence. Um, you can access arrays. You can access things, access things inside an array using the square bracket notation. So uh, these are indexed from zero. So if you wanted to access the first element in the array, uh, you would say variable underscore array and zero in the square brackets. Let's show message that value. Uh, you guys are, if you're still watching this after that whole long ramble about int 64s and booleans. You're probably pretty smart. You've probably seen arrays before. Uh, that'll show us 10. If we wanted to get the uh, hey. the sixth element in the array, we could say 5, and that will give us the thing that's at index 5, which is the sixth element in the array in order, uh, and that is the word brown, apparently. I'm not going to count. Uh, very similarly to structs, if you just printed out the value of an array without, uh, without using the square bracket notation to... Um, to access something inside it, uh, you would have something that looks like this, and this is just a string representation of all the things in the array, uh, all the things, all the elements in order. By the way, um, I don't, I didn't mention this when I was printing out the value of the struct. Uh, the things inside the struct are not stored in order; these are stored in a random order. The order that you define them in is not guaranteed to be the same as the order in which you um that you see them when you convert them to a string or get a list of all the. Uh, get a list of all the keys in the struct. Just bear that in mind. Anyway, if anyone's wondering, uh, arrays can also contain other arrays. So you can you could uh, make the last element in this array an array of its own, and that can contain like one, two, three, four, five. Uh, you, could, you could access these values by using double square bracket notation. So if zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, if you wanted to access the smaller array, the inner array, uh, you could say, element 7 in that array, and that would give you this. And if, for example, you wanted to access the third element um, in the smaller array, you could use another square another square bracket, and that would give you the number 3. 
This is very nice. The ability to just uh, put square brackets next to each other like this, known as chained accessors, uh, was not part of GML until very recently, until the 2.3 update. And now that it's here, I am very glad it's here because it makes, uh, makes certain kinds of code much easier to write. Anyway, those are arrays. Pointers. These are fun. Uh, back in December, I did an entire video about something that you can do with pointers that isn't really something that you are intended to be doing with pointers, but can do anyway. These are pretty much useless. Unless you are in the very specific business of passing a reference to either a buffer or the game window to a DLL in Game Maker, um, you have no use for pointers. There are two functions uh, that you can use that will return a pointer, and those are buffer get address, and this will return the, uh, the exact pointer to a buffer in memory, and you can pass that to a DLL, and you can do like magic stuff with memory manipulation in the DLL if you want to. Uh, there's also window get handle, window get handle, window get, uh, where is it? Window handle, not window get handle. And uh, related, this will return a pointer to the, um, to the game window itself. So the rectangle on the screen that pops up when you run the game, uh, this will return a pointer to the structure and memory that, um, that controls that. And you can pass that to a DLL and you can do a couple things with it if you want to. Aside from that, there's nothing really you can do with pointers. Uh, there is, however, the honor honorable mention of the PTR function, which is similar to the in64 constructor in that it will attempt to turn any value into a pointer. And when I say any value, I mean any value. And you can do this to uh, you can do this to do a couple interesting things, such as convert uh, strings and numbers to and from hexadecimal. Uh, this is not going to show us 800. This is going to show us, I believe, a bunch of zeros followed by a 320, um, as you can see in this message box. And this is going to convert this number and represent it. Uh, this is going to convert this to a pointer and represent it as hexadecimal when you try to show it on the screen. That's just a fun thing you can do with pointers. Again, I will have a link to the video that I made on that earlier uh, right now if you want to abuse pointers further. Otherwise, it's a... Uh, it has a very specific use case that almost that almost all people have no use for. Also, and I haven't been mentioning this as I go along, but there are functions uh, for is struct uh, to check if something is a struct. There is is array for checking if something is an array, and is pointer. Is ptr is ptr for checking if something is a pointer, which you can use if you ever want to uh, get to the type of a um, figure out if a variable or some other value is of a, of one of those types. Okay, lastly for the actual data types, there are functions. Uh, functions are also a new addition that came with uh, Game Maker Studio 2.3. And uh, just like structs, I have made a series of videos on those. So if you wanna see more about functions, you can go check those out. Um, to make a long story short, you can define a function in two ways. Function, uh, let's say add A and B. Uh, to make a function for adding two numbers together is kind of a, uh, it's kind of a tradition for demonstrating functions. And uh, this will allow you to show message. Uh, let's add, what are two numbers that we might want to add together? How about like 50? Don't, don't use a plus there. Uh, let's add the numbers 50 and 30. And assuming that this code is correct, which I think it might be, uh, this is gonna show us 80. There we go. So functions are useful. Functions let you, uh, functions let you um, recycle bits of code so that you don't have to write it over and over again. As far as the data type goes, there are two different ways you can define a function. Uh, there is like this, which is a named function. This is a function that will be available from anywhere in your code, anywhere in the game, uh, as long as you use its name. And there are what I like to call anonymous functions. Uh, let's do something different. Let's multiply these together instead, uh, instead of adding. And these functions um, may be stored in variables. You may pass them to variables. You may pass them as parameters to functions. But you will not be able to access this anywhere in your code, which does not, which is not able to see this variable function variable right here. Uh, so if you're doing this as a local variable, um, nothing outside of this, uh, nothing outside of the script of code will be able to see this function. Um, if it's and didn't mean to do that. 
if this is defined in some object's create event, for example, uh, you would have to access this like any other variable with the dot operator using a reference to the object first. Otherwise, you, know, you can use them the same as one of the other functions, as one of the global functions. You can call it using its um, a reference, its reference to it stored in the variable, and this is going to multiply 50 and 30 together and give us 1500. Okay. The function itself, uh, depending on how the function is de defined, you may see one of two different things when you try to convert it to a string, when you try to represent it as a string. Um, if you have an anonymous function like this, which is just defined as a local variable or something, or as a, um, a parameter to something else, uh, then if you try to print out such a thing, you're going to see something which is almost completely useless, which is function gmail script anon underscore underscore 452. It doesn't even show anything like the line of code on which that's defined. Um, whereas if you try to instead show the, uh, show the value of a function which is a global function, you will instead see something else. And that is going to be 10002. This is essentially the same as an instance ID in GameMaker. Uh, if you have an instance of a GameMaker object, uh, it works on a similar system. Uh, this is equally useless to the uh, to the printout of this function that you saw, although it's useless in different ways. Hey. Uh, regardless, printing out the result of a function is not super useful. Uh, it's not really something that you'll be able to make use of very often. Once in a while when you're debugging, you might want to do such a thing, but uh, generally not. Anyway, since functions are just values, functions are just data types in GameMaker, um, you can do the things that you can do with other variables uh, to functions. You can pass them around, so you can say uh, some other function equals add, and then you can invoke the, uh, you can invoke some other function. Telephone? I haven't had a telephone going off in a couple of videos. That's been nice. Can we do that again? Okay, with that aside, let's run this code and see what happens. So if you thought that this was going to execute the function add, which is stored in this some other function value, and add together four and nine, uh, you would be correct. It's pretty handy. Uh, there's also the, me the matter of methods. Methods are functions which uh, specifically belong to an instance of either an object or a struct. There's still functions at their core, but when you call them, um, the value of self will be set to whatever object they belong to, So, and you will be able to access all of their variables. You can create a method by assigning a function to a variable in something's create event, or if you're using a struct in its constructor. Uh, or there's also a function which has the hilarious name of method, which you can use to um, to do that after the fact. And just the fact that there is a function in GameMaker called method, it's not quite as good as true and false not being booleans, but it's, it's nonetheless hilarious in its own right. Um, anyway, methods are a bit of a special case. I have made videos on those in the past, and I will be planning to make a couple more in the future. And um, regarding functions, there are is function... Is there no is function? Interesting, there isn't, um, there isn't an is function function. That also sounds great. Uh, there's, there is, however, is method to check if a, uh, to check if something is a method. Okay, so there are a couple data types which are kind of special cases of some of the things we've talked about in the past uh, earlier in this video. First off, uh, there is undefined which is kind of a data type, is kind of like the opposite of a data type. Undefined is used to indicate that something does not contain a value. If you're used to other programming languages, uh, this is basically null. And you can use it to indicate the, uh, the lack of presence of any other value uh, when using an instance or a struct or some other function. There's a couple of functions that return undefined on their own. The uh, DS maps, DS list, if you try to access something out of bounds in one of those, it'll return undefined. There are a few others. Undefined is kind of boring. If you were to say variable undefined is undefined, and if you were to try and print out show message undefined, uh, we are just going to see undefined. I don't know how many times I just said undefined in that sentence, but regardless, it's pretty simple. Undefined can only have one value, which is, of course, I'm not going to say it again. You could use this for anything. It's kind of the uh, it's kind of the Joker in the deck of the the game maker uh, deck of cards. You can use undefined to denote a variable that exists but hasn't had anything hasn't had anything assigned to it yet, or that kind of thing. Uh, there is also uh, infinity, which is a special type of number. Infinity is a um, 
kind of a placeholder as far as numbers go. If you were to uh, show message uh, is real infinity, uh, you would see that infinity is indeed a real number. Uh, we got a one there when we when we try to, to show is real infinity. It's a placeholder. It's what you would get if you tried to do something like, uh, let's say five divided by zero. If uh, this is uh, this is obviously infinite since five divided by uh, divided into uh, segments of zero, there are an infinite number of. Okay, fine. The uh, the compiler won't let me do that. So we got to do this the long way around. This is going to show us infinity, um, abbreviated as INF for infinity. If you've, uh, if you've ever tried to turn in something divided by zero on your math homework, you know exactly what's going on there. Uh, there is a positive and negative infinity, so you can have uh, negative five divided by zero. It's going to be negative, negative infinity. There's also positive and negative zero in, um, in floating point in computers. I just That's not relevant to what we're talking about right now. I just thought that's a fun fact that you may enjoy. The idea of positive and negative zero. Um, be careful with this. Game Maker used to crash if you try to divide by zero. It won't crash anymore, but it will give you infinity. And um, if you try to do anything with the infinity that you get out of that, it's probably not going to be very useful. Um, related to infinity, there is uh, the value of nan, which is a fun word to say, but it stands for not a number. Uh, similarly to infinity, not a number is in fact a number. <laughs> I was wondering if I'd be able to say that without laughing. So if you were to say, is real nan, uh, we are going to see that... <laughs> this is just too funny. We're going to see that not a number is actually a number. Okay. Uh, this is also a special value. This is something that you would get if you tried to do something like, I believe, taking the square root of, um, of, of a negative number or taking the log of zero or something like that. Let's see, is nan is a function, and I can say something like square root of like negative five. And that should give me a, that should give me nan. Okay, so no, game maker's just gonna crash. Can I take the log of negative five? The base two log of negative five? That should give me nan. Okay, so this is gonna spit out nan. Let's see. If I were to just uh, show that show that value by itself, it'll give me nan. I wonder why the square root of a, a negative number doesn't, but the, the log of a negative number does. Because they're both not numbers. Or I guess technically the first is a complex number, but GameMaker doesn't exactly have those. So I would think nan is close enough. All right. Anyway, as you saw, uh, there is a function is nan, and then is nan uh, to check if something is not a number. Uh, you could also just check the value equals equals nan. Uh, there's likewise is infinity and equals equals infinity if you wanted them. And I believe that's it. There is the the, uh, the matter of enums. Uh, enumerated constants are a thing in Game Maker, but those are uh, those are actually just numbers. Those are int 64s. Those are one of the things that Game Maker will automatically turn into an int 64 for you. Is enumerated constants. Uh, there are some other fun uses you might have for enums, so I will make a future video on those as well. I do want to talk more about enums later. So instead, uh, I'm going to cut things off here. Um, I don't think I'm going to provide code for this in the video description because I didn't really write any code. This is just like enumerating all of the different things. Maybe I'll just like throw a paste bin or something, or a, a gist on GitHub, and I'll throw this in there instead of including the entire project. Who knows? Anyway. I hope you all enjoyed that. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these nerdy videos being made, there are links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I try to post about two of these videos a week. Uh, one of these tutorial tutorials, usually dealing with some of the weird technical bits of Game Maker, and one uh, Let's Make a Game series. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, feel free to subscribe. I hope you all find the fact that not a number as a number is as hilarious as I do, and I will see you all later. Okay, hold the phone real quick. Uh, there's one thing I forgot to mention, and that is, in addition to the things such as is string or is array, um, if you ever want to get the type of a value without having to check every single, and you, let's just say you don't know what that value is, and you don't want to have to check uh, every single data type with is string or is array or whatever, there is a function called type of, and this will just uh, sh return a string which uh, tells you what type a variable is. 
So if you wanted to say, for example, type of array, uh, this would just tell you array, which is fine. Uh, you have an you have an array. Uh, there is also uh, let's just say undefined type of undefined will return undefined, and you can do this with pretty much all of the data types, uh, as you can see. That's just something that may come in handy. I don't recommend not knowing what types your variables are um, in actual games, but if you're trying to debug something and there's a problem with the data type and you don't know what kind of data it is, uh, you can always use the type of variable, the type of function to figure that out. Now I will see you all later. Special thanks to David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Posho, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, Head on over to the Patreon page in the video description to join the fun.